Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Terry Ann Hyman here. This is my live stream for the Empowered Spirit Show podcast. This is where we come on Sunday nights. We talk about what's going on. We talk about the cosmos. We align our energy and we look to the cards for guidance as well. So we know there's so much going on in the world at large, right? I mean, it's like, hello, we all know this. And we're going to start really talking about how we're going to come out. All right, everybody's talking about the new normal, the new normal. I don't think there is a new normal. What about you? I haven't really come up exactly with what I'm calling it. New path, new awakening. That sounds a little woo. That's okay. We need woo right now. What are you calling it? Post below. Let me know what you're calling it. All right, because we're going to have to be making a lot of new decisions. And we're going to be using all this energy that we've been through to help us. So as we start out this week, we're coming into dark of the moon, which is like right now, dark of the moon is when it's really dark out there. And the tendency is to like really drop in energy. The tendency is for that darkness, that lack of light is to really kind of pull you down as well. The good news is that new moon always follows that. So we do need to do a little bit of work this week as we move through to kind of counter what that dark feelings are for you. Now, we also have the energy of moving out of this energy of Aries, which is where the moon is right now and the sun sign, but it'll be shifting. All right. And we're going to be shifting from the fires of Aries into the grounding, beautiful energy of Taurus, kind of a welcome feeling. It really will be a welcome feeling, although everything is shook up. So it really feels it really depends on where you align with that vibration for you. All right. Now, we do have some fun things coming up this week. All right, if you're a believer, if you're a smoker, if you're a pothead, 420, I can't not mention it. It comes around tomorrow, so there will be lots of people celebrating that energy. Whatever, all right? Then we move into Mother Earth Day on Wednesday, and that is in alignment with the new moon coming in. So the Mother Earth, so important. I was saying today I really needed to find a cause because I really just like, it gets me so upset about the energy of the elements. All right, we've been dealing with bottled water for years and now we're wearing masks. Yes, I know it's a virus, but what does that say? What does that say about what we're breathing? So we really do need to take some time as we move through this week and especially on Wednesday to honor Mother Earth. All right, I remember back in New York, gosh, I can't remember when it was. I think it was like 2000 and, 2010, maybe 2008, 2007. I'd have to look it up, but I was at a program and I met Tiakas and Ghost Horse, who was a Native American Lakota, and he had just come from the UN and he helped to establish it as International Mother Earth Day. Not just Earth Day, but International Mother Earth Day because she is our mother, right? And she needs to have the love and support from all of us. And if there's anything that we can take from one of these lessons, if there's any lesson we can take from what we're learning from COVID, is to honor our elements to be really, really responsible for the air we breathe, the water we drink, the earth we stand on. And what did I forget? The fire, right? The fire of our energy, the power, the oils, the way in which we power ourselves up. Really important and that we have to honor this. And hopefully you have noticed a little bit of the brighter skies and the brighter light and the birds singing, a little baby nest outside my window. These are the things that I do hope that we can all as a consciousness, as a collective society, really learn from this time. I really do. So as you move through this week, take the time to go in, take the time to set those new intentions and add an intention in there for Mother Earth, add an intention for her, for her health and her wealth as we turn around and start to find ways to come back. All right, put your feet on the earth. We're out there planting in the rain today. Got my bamboo garden started. These are the things that can really help you not only to align with Mother Earth, but to align with your spirit, to align with who you are. Go into the earth, take some time, send some Reiki down there and just like breathe, breathe, right? Find that inner peace because that's also what the energy of Taurus is all about, which we move into on Wednesday. Really breathe and really start asking yourself like, what is the shift for me? What are the changes that I've been learning about myself? These are the questions that you can ask to Mother Earth and Mother Earth can talk to you and you can talk to Mother Earth and you can overcome some of that energy of fear. That's the lower vibration that you may start your work out with the week out with this week. Worry, anxiety, those are those lower vibrations that dark of the moon can bring up. But when we get outside and when we honor that light and when we really open up 
to the core of who we are, that's how we shift the energy, right? Are you obsessing about where you are right now? Are you obsessing about the fear? That's what we kind of want to watch out as we start out this week. I know you can. I know it's easy to do, right? We're all going through struggles. Our money system is changing. We're all wondering about work. Did we get your stimulus check? Did you not, right? All these things going on. But that stability and where we are comes from within. It comes from talking to ourselves. It really does. And, and Taurus is a great way because it has that earth energy to help you sit down, to help you stabilize from within. So when you do go back out, you have that place of uncertainty that you can then open up and make certain. Find those shifts, find those changes, all right? I mean, the truth is, life is never certain. We just found this out. Life is never certain. The only thing that is, is yourself. It's yourself. When you return to yourself over and over, you build that confidence, you build that trust, you build that energy within you. So as we open up and move forward, you'll have a place to move from. You'll have a way in which to make those choices. You'll realize you can trust your own intuitive ability because you've been listening into it. All right. You've been turning in inward to gain that knowledge. And that's what that energy is of, of Taurus. All right. Taurus is also money. If you think about the market, think about the market. That's a whole nother like, oh no. Right. But that's that money, that abundance that is shifting too. So our money system is shifting. Where can you be a part of shifting it? Who do you trade with? Who do you buy with? Who do you support in your community? These are really important right now. And we are seeing a lot of this going on by, hey, do you have this? I need this. I'll trade you that. We need to continue that, especially as we move forward. We really do. And that is going to help us. Taurus is also ruled by Venus. And Venus is that beauty. It's also that creativity. It's the arts. Great time. All right. We won't be in this forever. So maybe we do have maybe two more weeks, right, to be home. And if you've been fretting, now's the time. Like, let it go. Tune in to yourself. Get into an art project. I mean, even like just get outside, put in some gardens, get with the earth, do something that really stimulates that creative part of who you are. And that's another way of being in that alignment of the vibrations of the cosmos right now. All right. The lower vibrations is going to be a little bit of self-doubt, self-loathing, not liking yourself. It's going to be a little bit of being instead of grounded, you're just going to be like all over the place, kind of like that little chicken without her head. Right. So Help yourself to be in the higher vibration so that you can ground into this energy. All right. And those lessons right now, nothing is ever guaranteed. Change is always going to happen. So when you use that Taurus energy, when it comes in this week, it's like, put your feet on the earth, ground into what you really hold dear and look around. Look at new relationships you created with your family, your children, people even like maybe even some of the online. I know I met with my college roommates, right? On Zoom. Maybe even those relationships have been able to go a little deeper. Even our four-legged friends. I was just seeing on the world news about the, the, the dog kennels. They're like empty now because people are adopting them. Yes, we have to care about all of this energy right now. And that's the energy that we're moving through. We will feel a little bit of a relief, although, although there is a little bit going on, I have to say, that's going to not help us to see all of the Taurus energy just because of the climate that we have and that we're moving through. But if we remember some of those buzzwords we talked about, adaptive, being fluid, finding that Earth energy, these are the things that can help you move through it with less struggle. But I will say that it really is going in yourself, finding your spiritual practice, talking to that deeper part of who you are and not so much trying to find the answers out there. So much energy is going on. So much knowledge is coming forward in terms of like information and NPR and people online and everybody's got something to say. You have to still like be able to decipher what it is for you. So as we shift out of one sun cycle into another, from the dark of the moon into the new moon, we do have the opportunity to set some new energy out there, plant new seeds. And also too, we were listening to... Um, Oh gosh, we were listening to Kaipacha. There was a webinar today and they were talking about the energy that we start to plant today under this new moon. I mean, this week with this new moon is a foreshadow for into 2021. So when you go to set your intentions on Wednesday, make sure you look into the long term as well. Very important as we do that. And it's going to be a long term as we move out. Finding that patience is going to be super important for all of us. So a few stones, I chose a few stones. I always like to do this at the beginning of the new moon and the sun cycle is a few of them which are really fun pink opal 
All right, a really great stone, pink opal. It's pink. It has the colors of the earth in it. I love it. It's a little different than like the blue opals and the fire opals. This is really that really calming. I am at peace. It offers love to the heart. So look and see if you can find some pink opal. I use these as beads and as bracelets as well. Although I do have a few specimens, little flat slices of it. Again, you see the pink and you see the earth in there. Really beautiful stones, very calming. Put some in your pocket when you go and meditate and sit with the earth. We were talking about this one on Wednesday when Tina was in the group, Lepidolite or Lepidolite, however you want to say it. This has that lithium energy in it. Very calming. This will help you to see it be still and slow down. Tina was also talking about sleep. I haven't tried it, but maybe I'll bring it upstairs with me tonight and try it. So it allows you to really, especially that lithium energy, very, very calming, very, very calming. And one more you can never go wrong with is green jade, all right? Green jade is great for right now, the abundance energy that Taurus brings in. I actually have it in my jade roller, one of my jade rollers. So even using this every day is a great way to bring that energy in and around to you. All right. Finding the stillness is really important as we move through this week. Go into your creativity. Check in with your self-worth. Are you loathing yourself or doubting yourself? Find the grounding ability so you can be secure as you go to make changes in what we're doing. All right. Right now, and especially as we begin on Monday and Tuesday, we're going to move into more of that dark of the moon. We're moving into it now. So it's a good time to kind of release any feelings of scarcity. Notice if you're feeling less than who you are and know that this is part of that dark of the moon. When we are aware of it and when we bring it to the surface, it's not as bad as we think it is, right? Declutter your mind, declutter your space. It's a good time to do that spring cleaning. All right. And focus on what you do want to create. And sometimes just by getting creative, helps you to understand more and more of what you can do as we move out of this energy. Wednesday, late Wednesday night is the new moon. So that's a time to have all this out of your way and use that Aries, that fire to get you through that dark of the moon energy. Wednesday evening into Thursdays, when we set our new intentions, new moon comes in. And aren't we glad? Aren't we glad that this cycle, we can let it go because we know things are going to shift. We've already been talking about it coming out getting back to some kind of work or whatever that means for you. Change up your intentions. Be sure to set one in there from Mother Earth. All right. And then as we move into Friday, Saturday, we're going to still go into that energy and let that new moon just carry you all the way through as you celebrate Mother Earth and celebrate being out into the world. Yes. All right. So we do have some good things coming up. We do have some transits. We're still into all that energy that we talked about with the Capricorn and Saturn and Jupiter, we still have all that going on. Those are the outer planets, all right? And that's the break of the, of the systems. That's the change in what we're doing. So <laughs> just to remind you, you probably are feeling it and you probably already know this, but it hasn't gone anywhere. It's long-term, all right? We will start to see some of the pandemic start to ease a little bit as you move towards the end of the week. Still more to come, still more to understand. But the more that you can use the vibrations of Taurus, ground your energy, use the beauty of of Venus to open up to that beautiful part of who you are, find your place in being abundance and ask yourself too, like, what does abundance mean for me? What have you been enjoying while you've been at home? And how has that made you feel? All right, the good stuff. We really wanna honor all those things and offer gratitude for what it is we have. So let's just take a moment and offer gratitude, bring our energy in as we can prepare for the week ahead. So wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes and just take a few moments with me. Take a nice deep inhale. Whoops. And exhale. Calling back your energy from the week. Calling in your higher self and feel that alignment right on top of the crown. Calling in your higher self. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Call in your spiritual self as we take this time to align our energy and to set some intentions. The medicine will, the season of spring is in the direction of the east where the sun rises each and every day, where it gives us that hope for this new beginning that is ahead of us. We plant our seeds and we open up to this energy. 
as we awaken to a new beginning, calling in the directions for guidance and protection to the east, the south, the west, and the north, above us, below us, calling into your spirit, taking this moment and setting an intention for you as we finish one cycle and move into another. Bring that intention right into that third eye center and allow yourself to see those intentions, see them coming in. And now as they come in, how do you feel? How will you feel as these intentions come in for you? And allow those emotions to elevate, to rise. The elevation, the energy of joy, of peace, of abundance, of light, whatever it is for you. And allow those energies to radiate up and out through the energy fields. Releasing the attachment and just radiating this energy out and all around you. Inhaling and exhaling. And just sit in this vibration for a moment, feeling how it makes you feel, the peace, the joy. Sending out some Reiki energy, Han Chin Se Shonen, Han Chin Se Shonen. For these intentions, for your week, for the alignment of your energy. Take another deep inhale and exhale and just feel that energy coming right in through the crown moving through all of the chakras all the way down connecting with mother earth honoring mother earth feel that alignment coming in for you feel the energy all around you pulling in with love with light and just taking a moment and anybody you may know right now who may be suffering who may be feeling less than who they are, maybe they have the virus, whatever it is, see them surrounded in this light, share this light with them, bring their presence in. Let us open this up even further all around to all our first responders, our nurses, our doctors, our practitioners, our helpers, our institutions, our healthcare, just sending them light for the highest vibration. We can rise above this virus. To those in Washington, for the highest light, may they find the way for the highest good for all, sending them this love and this light to help raise their vibrations, that we may all rise above the greed of the world and find that shift and that change as we embark upon this new awakening, this new path. Take a nice deep inhale. As we charge this energy all for the highest good, shokurei, 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 sending it out all for the highest good and just releasing this energy out take a nice deep inhale and just imagine this beautiful light surrounding you as you start to bring your awareness back coming back just blinking the eyes open just noticing how you're feeling so as we go to look to the cards i love this first card some of these cards have been showing up, but this is the star card. So this is a card that really gives us the faith and the hope that a new day is coming. That new awakening energy, everything is pointing up to that star. All of this energy is lifting us up. So if it has been a struggle for you or you do find your energy is a little low as we move through this week, take a breath. Go outside and look up at the stars and know you are being guided too. We are all in this together. We're moving at different rates, that is true, but we all look up at the stars and the moon. We are together. Find that guidance for you up above into the heavens and bring it right in to that place within you that connects you to that energy. So there is that guidance and that star for you coming in. That's for all of us, yay. Especially as we go into a new moon, a good time to really set that feeling again. So if you chose card number one, we have the two of pentacles, all right? So this is actually our only minor card. The rest are all major. So this is about transition. This is about change. Twos are always that juggling, right? We have this, but I love the way that she does this in the wild unknown. I love the way the two pentacles are connected by this infinity, all right? It's like transformation. Butterflies are transformation. So yes, we all are being asked to juggle many things in our lives. What are you juggling for you? 
What can you choose to let go of? And what can you really let that help you to transform into this new path for yourself as we move through this week? All right, I love this card. It's a great card of abundance as well. It's pentacles, it's our earth, it's our Taurus energy. All right, if you chose card number two, it's the fool, all right? We chose this for someone, I think Jackie last week. The fool doesn't mean you're foolish. The fool is all about starting again, which is perfect for where we are, especially Wednesday of the new moon. All right, it's the zero, it's the major arcana. It's where we begin that journey again. Perfect card for starting out that new energy. This reminds you, really kind of ask the questions like, do you spiritually trust where you are? Can you make that next step forward for you? Are you too afraid to make any changes? Are you stuck in one place? It's gonna be really hard if you feel stuck in one place because we're all being asked to make changes. So have faith, have trust, be smart. I'm not saying be stupid, but be smart. That's not what the fool is about. The fool is really the innocence of life. And if you're working within yourself and you're going in and asking the questions and those energies, that intuitive energy is coming up as a yes, trust it and take that step. It's actually so funny, my little birds birthed outside my little window, my office, their nest, and the last one was waiting for me. At least that's what it felt like. The other two had gone and it was right there and it was looking and looking and it saw me and it started flapping and off it went, right? Brand new bird, it was the first time it flew and I saw that and it reminded myself, yeah, sometimes it feels like that, very raw and very fragile. But if we don't take it, we'll be in the same place. Now is the time to really listen for that step for you. And the third card we've had too as well, it's the justice card, another major. And this is all about looking at karma, looking at that next step, knowing the next steps you do take will have consequences down the road. So that's where that being smart comes in. All right, so the action, for every action, there's a reaction. Where is the justice in life? Where can you make those choices to help you move forward? And knowing as you do, there is a balance for everything we do. Here we see both sides. So make sure as you do go make your choices and noticing what you're juggling, there are two sides to everything, being sure of the path that you choose. Now that doesn't mean get caught in the brain and get caught in the fear, but just looking at how it will unfold for you little by little, all right? It's kind of like when we throw the pebble in the water, the ripples start to come out. So when you go to make your changes, know it will have effect, even if it's a small change. And right now, quite honestly, that's the best place to do it. One little step at a time, one little step, one little step, one little step, and eventually you'll see they add up. Don't try to make big, huge changes right now, one little step. Build the work, build your shifts, build the changes. All right, so just to review as we go through this week, oops, I dropped one. As we go through this week, have the faith of that star out there. Realign with the courage to go forward, realign with your faith in humanity. We always change, we always do. And now is another one. It just happens to be a happener, happening very fast for all of us at one time. All right, mankind will evolve, how will you? Big questions, all right? I dropped the fool. <laughs> all right, she jumped off her step. The second one is the two of pentacles. Notice what you're juggling. Notice all the many things that go into making the earth energy into your work. And notice that that will transform. All right, the more that you are aware of it. The second card was the fool card. All right, and this was all about taking the chance in life and stepping out into the world with some new idea, new hope and inspiration as you begin this new journey. Again, this is a beginning card, new moon. And then we have the justice card, all right? For every action, there is a reaction. As you go to make your choices, know that down the road, it will make a difference. It's kind of like setting the intentions for this new moon is going to come back around as we move into 2021, all right? So look a little long-term, have patience. Don't die to too, too much at once. One step at a time is really important. I also thought I would draw from the shaman cards, especially given that it's Mother Earth, day coming up. I dropped that one as well. So this card is really pretty. It's called Beauty Way. Really beautiful card. And this is to remind us of the joy in life. This is to remind us of finding beautiful things in all we do. It's easy to complain. It's easy to get caught in what we don't have. It's easy to forget how beautiful each and every little flower out there is. So this reminds you to find that. Again, gratitude is always an ascending emotion. So noticing where that is for you. Beauty way, all right? It's all the beautiful, it's got the flowers, it's got the dragonfly, and it's got that lotus opening. So as you go about to set this new way for you, what is the beauty you can bring forward as you move through this week, right? Beautiful card. 
All right. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale and just let that settle in for you for a moment. I'll take some requests for cards if anybody wants. Just a few announcements coming up. I am doing Reiki 2 online. Yes, many of you have been asking. This is the perfect class to do online because we work with long distance. You learn how to use the long distance tools. If you're interested, you can go to my website. Actually, I'll post the link below. Please sign up. I have a two payment plan to make it easier. I've kept the early bird on. Let me know. We meet on Saturday. I've broken it down. So we'll take a break, come back, and we'll get all the information in. All right, do sign up if you're interested. It is on for next Saturday. All right. Also, two coming up, let's see, Monday, I still will continue my Monday motivation. Come tap with me in the group. We'll tap out our fears. It's been a great way to get rid of some of that anxiety as you move through the week. Tuesday, I'll do another Akashic Clearing. This is all in the group this week. Wednesday at 12, I'm actually going to be at the Medicine Wheel, and I invite anybody that wants to come. We'll practice social distancing, but I'll be doing a Mother Earth ceremony live from the Medicine Wheel at 12 in the group. Thursday at noon, we're going to do some new moon intentions. And Friday, I'll do a Reiki circle in the group. So all of this is happening in the group. That's my Empowered Spirit Circle. You can find the link on Instagram in my bio or search it on Facebook or just private message me and I will put you in the group as well. Just trying to build that community for all of us in the group. It's a great way to share this energy. The podcast this week on the Empowered Spirit Show, I interviewed two amazing powerhouse women, Becca and Pella and Meredith Calhoun from Practice Works. And we talked about physically distancing, spiritually connecting, and all the many things of how we are adapting and working with technology and still creating a community and talks all about practice works and what they do for their mission. So be sure to check that out as well. I've had some great podcasts these past few weeks and more to come. All right. Those are my main announcements. So if you'd like a card, let me know. All right, I see Marissa. Hey, Mary, I see both of you jumping in there. And I see Millie over here and Jenny over here on Facebook as well. All right, Marissa, I'll start with you. Here we go. So far, so good on the internet. Yay. All right. The lovers. Need I say any more, Marissa? Look at this card. All right. So take it for what you want, but this is a beautiful card. Look at all the colors. Look at the geese. So just take it in, make a wish, set those intentions. The lovers. Done. Da -da -da. Love it. Love it card. Beautiful card. This is very nice. All right. That's for you. All right, Mare. Mare, you got the Son of Wands. So this is a really a passionate card. And this is a transformation as well. Look at the snake. Look at this energy. Wands is all about our passions and desires. So time to reset those intentions. What are your passions and desires? All right. That is what you can work for this week as you go through. Journal on it a little bit. Have that innocence. All right. But use some of the areas that fire as we go through this. But really like open up. What is that passion and desire? Have some of that innocence to bring this forward for you. All right. Good card. All right. All right. Millie. Millie, we got the hair front. So this is a kind of an interesting card. I like her description in this deck. The traditional deck always made me a little bit weird, but the hair front is always about like recognizing who are you giving your power away, all right? It's always like it shows us like authoritative figure. So just careful, check in, look at the call of where you are with your energy. The key to your own self is within yourself. It does sometimes recommend spiritual teacher, finding a teacher at this time, but there is a lightning bolt around it too. So there is some aha energy there. So just check in and see what you're doing. And maybe now is a good time to find a spiritual teacher or to just take those teachings into yourself and make them your own. All right. Good card. All right. Jenny, Jenny, how you doing? Jenny, we got the four of wands. All right, I like this card because four is always about balance, but this is a card that kind of brings that connection of your passions together. And it's telling you like, go in a little deeper too. Like you can go even deeper with what it is you desire and what it is that you're doing. Passions and desires, four is an alignment of energy. And then look at that indigo blue right there. So it's like, go in, open up your intuition, dig in deeper, really great cards. Like things are working, things are coming together. It's like you're going into the eye of all of that for you. All right. Hey, Kate, Kate would like a card. Okay, we got the Daughter of Pentacles. All right, so this has some innocence to it. All right, I feel like we drew it last week. Maybe, I don't know, can't remember. But Pentacles is our Earth, so that aligns with that Taurus energy. We have the rainbow up here as well. So the energy of the Pentacles is our Earth energy, our work, and what we're doing. 
daughter energy is having some of that innocence and that ability to be creative and what you're doing and choosing to do in the world. All right. For your work and how you connect as well. So just go in and look at that, review some of that, especially as you go through to make some intentions on Wednesday as well. Okay. All right. Raylene, I got a 10 of wands. All right. So this is like 10 are always completions and beginnings really, but 10 is coming to the end of a cycle. So it is an end of a cycle, which is great because we're moving into a new moon. So any of this energy that's hanging, hanging out, you can let go of, especially what isn't serving you. Really important to see that, but it is about your passions and desires. So allow things to shift for you, allow things to open up in a different light. All right. We take all that energy we've learned from it and one, right? 10 is a zero plus a one. We begin again. Perfect alignment for where we are right now. All right. Anybody else did I miss? Let me know. Post again if I did. So a lot is going on this week as we move from the dark of the moon into a new moon. All that shifting, we're starting to talk about coming out. So notice for your own self, what will it take for you to come out? How will you move this forward? What lessons have you learned for yourself? And find the beauty in all that you do. At least find something that's going to lift that vibration. But notice the flowers, notice the birds, notice the clean air. And allow yourself to go deep within and make the shifts that you need. All right? Thank you guys so much for joining me. Check out the podcast. Join me in the Empowered Spirit Circle this week. Lots of fun stuff. I'm offering no cost. Just doing it because we are together at this time and can be. Take a nice deep inhale. And exhale. Align with your spirit. Allow your intentions to guide you as you move through this week. Radiate those higher vibrations and set those intentions for you. Thanks again for joining me. This is your host, Terri Ann Hyman. To your spirit, namaste.